Hi guys, uh, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of testosterone and testosterone and its effects on the heart. Right, so let's get started. The first thing to say is testosterone is the principal male sex hormone. And we know that in general, as men get above the age of 40, testosterone levels start dropping. We also know that as men get to above the age of 40, their overall cardiac risk and their overall risk of mortality starts increasing. So it appears that overall cardiac risk starts going up around about the same time as when testosterone levels start falling. What we don't know is whether they're both simply a consequence of aging or whether in some way testosterone is protective against cardiac risk, right? And in this uh, video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review what we do know about testosterone and the heart so far. So testosterone is produced in the male testes and about 98% of testosterone that is produced binds to a protein, a carrier protein, which circulates it around the body. This carrier protein is called SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. About 1-2% to 2 of testosterone circulates unbound to this protein, all right? Uh, the free testosterone, the testosterone that is unbound, is perhaps the most potent biological form of testosterone. But when we measure testosterone levels, we're measuring the whole, you know, we're measuring the whole lot. Uh, testosterone is responsible for the development of primary and secondary sex characteristics, and it also has the effect of increasing both muscle mass and bone density. When men become testosterone deficient, they often uh, develop reduced libido, they develop, they develop erectile dysfunction, they have reduced energy levels, they have bad mood, and they have increased irritability. Overall, sexuality, health status, and quality of all life in general just get worse if you're testosterone deficient. And the prevalence of testosterone deficiency in middle-aged and older men in the literature is quoted as being anywhere between 2.1 to 12.8%. So up to 12.8%, more than 1 in 10 people who are middle-aged or older may have testosterone deficiency. There are certain populations that are particularly more vulnerable to becoming testosterone deficient. These include patients with heart failure, patients with type 2 diabetes, patients who are obese, patients who have uh, lung disease, COPD, emphysema, etc., people who have HIV, and patients who are opioid users. Currently, the way uh, testosterone is measured is through an early morning blood test, which measures total testosterone levels. And if the level is less than 200 nanograms per mil, then it is classed as testosterone deficiency. There is, however, some controversy as to how good the test looking for testosterone deficiency is. And in fact, when the test suggests the value as being low normal, uh, people still, uh, scientists are still arguing as to whether that truly means low normal or does it actually mean that those patients are testosterone deficient. Some scientists have suggested that maybe it may be better to measure just the free testosterone, the unbound testosterone in the circulatory system, uh, but we're still not clear what the best way of measuring testosterone is. However, uh, what we do know is um, it is not measured routinely uh, and um, it is certainly not well known about in uh, you know, primary care. And a lot of times patients who are particularly vulnerable, like type 2 diabetics, etc., are not routinely tested for low testosterone levels. And uh, to my mind, they should be. Now, the question is, uh, what do we know about testosterone and the heart? So the first thing is testosterone and overall cardiac, overall or cardiac mortality. Uh, there was a publication by a guy called Corona who looked at 1,178 articles, and he concluded that testosterone deficiency was associated with both an increased overall mortality and increased cardiac mortality. Now, these are lots of small studies, and he's looked at all of them and put you know, concluded that. Um, the second thing was testosterone and specifically coronary artery disease, meaning atherosclerotic disease, atheroma in the heart arteries, which is 
eventually responsible for things like heart attacks, etc. And um, what um, we know about testosterone is that it has certain properties which would be very good for our circulatory system. It's a vasodilator, it opens up blood vessels and therefore it allows better flow of blood vessels into uh, of blood into the blood vessels. And it is also an anti-inflammatory agent. And when you look at uh, small studies that have been done, so there are no really big studies, but the small studies that have been done have shown an inverse relationship between serum testosterone and the severity of coronary artery disease or heart artery narrowings. A population of patients with the lowest testosterone levels are more likely to have the most severe forms of heart artery disease. So again, very interesting, suggesting that testosterone deficiency may be linked to worsening heart disease. Another group which is really interesting is heart failure patients. And when you look at heart failure patients, for every stage of severity of heart failure, when you take these patients and compare them to age match patients who don't have heart failure, this group of patients seem to have lower testosterone level. And those patients who have lower testosterone levels with heart failure tend to have a worse prognosis compared to those patients who are at the same stage of heart failure but don't have low testosterone levels. So again, very interesting. Um, there's, some, there's been some conflicting information about testosterone and cholesterol and lipid values. And at the moment, we cannot be definitive about the effects of testosterone and cholesterol and lipid values. But what we do know is that patients who have type 2 diabetes uh, have lower testosterone levels in general compared to patients who are non-diabetic. In population studies, it appears that the patients with the lowest levels of testosterone have an almost double risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Again, very interesting, but still doesn't tell us whether this is causative or just an association. Uh, uh, it's also... Um, so, so the next question is to try and work out, is it association or is it causative? What we have to try and work out is, does it make a difference to patients if you replace the testosterone? Let's say if you are deficient in testosterone and you replace the testosterone, does that result in improved outcomes for the patient? Because if it doesn't, then there's no point worrying about it. But if it does, then uh, in some ways it's well worth doing. Again, there are no really big studies, so there is no definitive large study, but there are lots of smaller studies which show really interesting and encouraging data. Okay, What we do know is testosterone deficient men have more fat and lower muscle, uh, and we also know that obese patients tend to be uh, more likely to be testosterone deficient. When you use, thyroid, uh, when you use TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, uh, we know that fat mass percentage, the amount of uh, fat, uh, body fat percentage can drop by an average of 2%. Okay. Um, now, so, the, so there's no doubt that if you replace the, the testosterone, people feel better. So they've got, they've got lower libido, they've got all the mood issues and irritability, that, that gets better and their body fat percentage tends to drop, which is also a good thing. The question is, are there any data to suggest that in some way testosterone will not only make those people feel better if they're, um, if they're testosterone deficient, uh, but will it actually be good for their heart and their overall health and their future risk? And as I say, there are no really big studies, uh, but there are uh, lots of small scale studies. In fact, the FDA in America looked at testosterone and what they found is they've looked at all the studies and they found four studies which suggested that testosterone could have been testosterone replacement could be harmful. But they found over 100 studies which suggested that maybe testosterone replacement could be beneficial. So in terms of what benefits have been suggested, uh, the first thing we know is that it appears uh, that there is reduced cardiovascular risk in those people who have naturally high testosterone levels. So if I have higher levels of testosterone in my body that I've been genetically blessed with, my risks of having developing heart disease are going to be lower. We also know that if you replace testosterone in testosterone deficient patients, then it results in an improvement in the cardiac risk factors. Number three, 
we also know that patients who are testosterone deficient and are then given testosterone replacement therapy seem to have less mortality compared to patients who are testosterone deficient but are not given testosterone replacement therapy. If we look at specific groups, um, in patients with coronary disease, we know that low testosterone levels are associated with worse coronary disease, but what, are this, what is the evidence that, thero that testosterone replacement could help in these people? And there have been three randomized placebo-controlled studies which have suggested that um, testosterone replacement therapy uh, reduces the amount of myocardial ischemia or the demands of, uh, on the heart when there are blood um, uh, vessel narrowing. So it reduces the amount of suffocation the heart muscles have to endure uh, when a person is exercising if you give them TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, if they are deficient in testosterone. We think that this happens because of its vasodilatory role. It opens up the blood vessel. So if you have narrowings and you're exercising, blood isn't going to get through as easily. If you're taking testosterone because you're testosterone deficient, the testosterone could potentially be opening up the blood vessels, and that is why these patients do better. Um, as I said, heart failure patients tend to have lower testosterone levels. What is the evidence that replacing the testosterone in these patients could make a difference? And there have been studies which have shown that if you take uh, deficient patients, you replace the testosterone, their exercise capacity improves and their functional status improves. In one study, uh, there was a 16.7% improvement in the amount of, uh, uh, in the distance that a patient could walk during a six minute walk test uh, when they were replenished with testosterone. So again, really interesting, encouraging data, but based around small studies. What about diabetes? There have been studies that have shown that in those patients who are type two diabetic and they are testosterone deficient, if you give them testosterone replacement, their blood fasting sugar levels are improved and their HbA1c levels which also is a marker of you know how well their blood sugars are controlled over a few weeks is is improved so that's again very encouraging but again based around small studies the question is so i've told you of all the good things i've told you about the fact that it uh, improves uh, patients quality of life uh, i've told you that it may have these beneficial effects in terms of heart disease the question is what are the risks um, now uh, the uh, what are the risks of particularly of TRT or testosterone replacement therapy. Uh, a few years ago, there was a publication which suggested that when you replace testosterone, uh, there was a higher incidence of prostate problems, okay? And people looked at that and thought, oh, maybe testosterone replacement is associated with increased risk of prostate cancer. Actually, when you look at the initial studies, what they classified as prostate problems included uh, more urinary frequency, a rise in a blood test called PSA, which is a marker of prostate, uh, which is a tumor marker for prostate cancer, uh, cancer, and also more biopsies on the prostate. But when you dissect all the data, people have come out and now said, actually, TRT does not appear to increase the risk of prostate cancer. So that's really good, reassuring news. The second thing to say is that testosterone definitely increases the hematocrit of our blood. It increases the thickness levels of our blood. And uh, the question then is, if our blood is in some way more thick or, you know, you've got more blood cells, could you could the blood clot easier and therefore cause us damage? And actually, uh, there was a study by a guy called Ramasamy et al., and he followed patients on TRT up for three years and found that there was no real increase in blood clots. So whilst um, hy hypothetically there may be an increased risk, practically it didn't appear that these patients were at a higher risk of blood clots. Uh, it does uh, increase the blood thickness. They do develop a little degree of polycythemia, uh, but it doesn't appear that that translates into bad things happening for the patient. So, in summary, testosterone is really interesting. Testosterone deficiency is common and it is underappreciated. It can make quality of life worse, but it could probably also impact adversely on our length of life. 
doctors don't routinely look for it and should be looking for it, especially in those who are most vulnerable, patients with heart failure, patients with heart disease, older patients, uh, patients above the age of 40. Um, and if it is found, then testosterone replacement therapy could substantially improve quality of life and may also have good long-term effects may improve prognosis but it has to be done under medical supervision and it has to be done by someone who has experience in um, uh, dealing with testosterone deficiency the problem unfortunately is there's very little uh, education about testosterone a lot of primary care physicians secondary care physicians uh, don't know enough about it they don't know when to look for it they don't know how to interpret the results they don't even know whether the results tell us what they're meant to tell us um, and therefore it's a good idea to find someone who is experienced in uh, testosterone replacement uh, to manage that uh, but i certainly think that if you're someone who has type 2 diabetes or if you're just developing symptoms and you're middle age do ask for a blood test for testosterone and make sure it's done by someone who understands testosterone so i hope you found this useful again my aim with this channel has always been to try and give people uh, information to allow them to ask questions and to allow them to become their own advocates so once again thank you so much thank you for all that you do for me i'm going to put some more videos out and again once again thank you it was my birthday last week uh, a lot of people wrote to me and i'm so so grateful you guys uh, make my life worth living thank you so much all the best